Way, Silly Gurke hier wieder am Start und diesmal mit Teil 2 von Understanding Tor Onion Services and Their Use Cases. Äh, mal wieder hier auf äh, sillyhoon.com, dem gerade erreichbaren Server Laser Gurkenland, auch erreichbar unter der IP 149.202.107.134. Ähm, ja, letzte Folge war AFK, die Folge davor haben wir Understanding Tor Onion Services and Their Use Cases Hope 6 2016 von dem Channel Tor Project geschaut. Ich glaube, ich habe off Camera noch was geschaut. Ich meine, letzte Folge ging es irgendwann auch so mit Minute 28 und jetzt sind wir hier bei 37. Ähm, sorry für das. Ähm, ja, jedenfalls geht es hier weiter bei Minute 37, 13 von... Äh, ja, der Tor Project. Alles klar. Okay. Uh, you can check the Tor Dev mailing list. Uh, this is where we do our design work, basically. If you, if you check the archives, you can see various proposals. All the things we described so far exist in, in, in like, uh, proposals, tech proposals. Um, and also we have limited development firepower. So if you're good at testing code, uh, reviewing code, uh, or whatever, show up to our IRC channel and uh, ask for a, ask for a task or something. We're usually friendly people, overloaded friendly people. So <laughs> we will try to, to direct you correctly. Um, and uh, we're reaching the final stage of this talk with the take -up. Okay, das geht ja gut los hier mit Final Stage. So, here are some of the tips to keep your onion addresses safe and secure. First of all, don't run relays uh, if you're running an onion address. If you run a relay, it basically reveals your onion address. Um, use Unix sockets whenever you can to avoid like TCP connections altogether. It's amazing security. Keep your Tor up to date. Um, like, just don't run ancient version and you know expect the le excuse me the least um, like you know that the recent security like it's not gonna happen um, audit your config files like um, a lot of people make a lot of mistakes in their web servers for example like there is this thing in um, in Apache apparently that uh, mod um, status or something like that that basically leaks a lot of information about all the people who are connected to that web server if you go to that, um, I know it's a, it's a lengthy link down there, but uh, if you search the internet for uh, Rise Up um, Onion Services Best Practices, you can find that link. Um, good people of Rise Up have put together a best practices document on how to run Onion Services um, with the most security. Um, use a stealth authentication whenever you can, because that way, even if you leak the at your onion address, um, they can't connect to it because it's, you know, like uh, they need the key and also because you can recycle those things pretty quickly. It, all it takes is just basically uh, commenting one line in your um, Tor RC file and re restarting your Tor client. That's it. And um, OPSEC, I mean, you can't, like, you know, I don't know, um, you, you, you probably know. Um, enough about this, like if you have bad OPSEC, you can't, like if, if you do everything else wrong, you can't uh, put your life and, and activism on, uh, oh my God. on just the technology Oh my God, itself. oh my God. Um, it's, I think it's very important, like if you're, like especially for, for um, activist use cases in crazy situations, especially in Middle East. Um, so here, uh, like we need a lot of, uh, I, I think oh. it, it's, it's Jesus one of the things Christ. that we need a uh, community to get more involved in this kind of things. We need more creative ideas and um, experiments with, uh, with Onion services. Uh, all the, all the um, interesting use cases actually came from the community, not the Tor project itself. Uh, like two good examples of that um, is um, Onion Share and Ricochet and Pond actually tree. Um, I think Ricochet was, the, the idea was based on Pond, uh, but yeah. We need more uh, more people and like legitimate organizations to run onion services and not just for their like having websites is, is one thing and having like different different services running different services over onion is also another thing like uh, I check my email over onion because you know uh, I basically avoid man in the middle attacks altogether I also uh, have this um, set up on my like 
personal mail server that uh, because I use um, hidden service authentication, only I can connect to that um, main server over IMAP and, and nothing else, you know, can get in. Um, so you can like, we, we need more people to run Onion services because because that way we can like find the problems and everything. Um, many applications benefit from the from the native core clients in their um, nor native core clients in their in their application and also uh, native Onion addresses. Uh, Facebook did something um, amazing on Facebook for Android that if you have if you have Orbit installed and if you have Facebook for Android, it um, there is an option that um, it's like kind of like hidden option that appears. That it basically sends all of your traffic over over Onion. Um, GPG that uh, just um, started, you know, uh, supporting Tor. Um, it's one of the options in the in the recent um, options. Bitcoin uses um, at Onion thing, and we also need more ways to quickly uh, run this Onion services. Um, and like basically, if you need them, like for I don't know, like ten minutes or. 10 hours and then you know that that's it you can um, you, you need more ways to be able to like quickly deploy these things i don't know if you're uh if you're docker people like docker magic or whatever um tells like there is a, G a google summer of code uh, project happening uh, at tor right now that um one of the students is working on tail server which has similar ideas but um it's always better to have different approaches uh, for different thread models and different um, situations and uh, finally, we need um, more ways uh, to find useful and, um, you know, like uh, relevant um, Onion services or Onion sites. A lot of, um, like there is, there's Amia that uh, is this search engine and there are um, a bunch of tools like um, XMPP-Client is, is an XMPP client that has uh, hard-coded the Jabber address of known um, Jabber servers like uh, like jabber.ccc.de um, and we need like more things like that to happen um, so we can we can find these onion addresses that are useful and we can use. Uh, Rise Up also has this uh, page that basically every service that they want has an equivalent of onion so if you can if you want to fetch your email over onion address you can or if you want to connect to Rise Up Jabber over onion or use any other services. Thank you. Okay, Leute, das war der Talk hier, Understanding Tor Onion Services. Oh, da sind noch jede Menge Fragen. Alles klar. Alles klar. Aber, ja, hier, ne? das war auf jeden Fall der Talk. Just a quick plea. Um, first of all, if you want to go to the, uh, we have time for questions now. Please use the microphone and please ask your question in the form of a question. <lacht> okay. Hey guys, um, hi, I'm Daniel from George Mason University. Um, we work on cloud robotics a lot. You know, the bad actors are our enemies, but our biggest enemy is latency. Uh, so I, I like this, but have you done any tests for latency and what, what could I expect? Uh, any additional latency? This is a Ouch. I'm mm. gespannt. Yeah, I, 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 I actually don't know exactly what kind of latency you expect and you, you would like to have. I don't think you can treat uh, Tor as a real-time system where the latency is well known and everything. Um, sometimes the latency is much better than you would expect from a thing that has six hops. But uh, in general, and depending on the threat model of your, uh, of your things, because uh, maybe they don't need to be pure anonymous, they can have less hops, I don't know, they can be single onion services or something, um, you can have improved performance. But um, without knowing the exact specs of your of your, of your thing, I cannot uh, know if it's uh, the right thing to do. Yeah, if the latency is what you're fighting for, for um, there needs to be more issues. Uh, but you haven't done any tests on the latency. Okay. Oh, I see. Thank you. Uh, hey, what? But you haven't done any tests. Okay. So you mentioned um, uh, Vanguard, the, the Vanguard system for um, uh, avoiding the, the uh, attack on hidden services guard nodes. It seems to me the main reason you need that is that an attacker can cause the uh, onion service to make new circuits. 
Wouldn't that apply to other Tor clients as well? Is, is, um, or are you considering using the vanguards for other other clients? Um, okay, so for normal clients, you usually cannot force a Tor client to create an arbitrary number of circuits, as you can do for hidden services. Well, sure, but consider like a, um, a web page running JavaScript that has a, uh, um, a uh, cross-origin anonymous uh, script thing. Presumably, th that will go in a different Tor circuit, right? Um, I actually don't know how circuit isolation okay, right. works in this case, but indeed, you can think that over time, the, the any client will eventually create enough number of circuits that you it, it, it will hit your middle node eventually. Um, actually, when we designed the Vanguard proposal, we actually thought of applying this to clients so that it's uh, symmetric, you know, so that it's uh, all the all the all the entities use the same path construction basically. So. If we did it for hidden services, we would most probably do it for clients as well. Okay, cool. Thank you. Also, thank you for the great work. Mm -hmm. the end Hi. Of the um, just how decentralized is the directory system, and how are the directory nodes chosen by the network? Um, so decentralized, uh, basically there are eight servers around the world. Uh, there's two in the US, two in Netherlands, two in Germany, one in Austria, something like that. Uh, uh, they are chosen very carefully. Let me say it, let's say that. So they're always th there's no organization running in a, di a directory. It's always a person uh, that we trust that the community knows. This person needs to come to the meetings uh, with that most people actually met in person. Uh, so that's for the operator part and the network part. We try to use also trust in networks. Uh, for instance, run it at Rise Up, some in universities, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, we wouldn't run a directory authority instead, uh, for instance, instead of Etzner or VH or stuff like that. Anyway, they don't want that. Then. So that's as much security we have for directories. Have you thought about using like a distributed hash table kind of a thing? Uh, there have been multiple uh, proposals about uh, making it better, less centralized in some ways, and so on and so forth. But uh, this this the directory system, the okay. consensus and the votes are actually extremely complicated. Uh, and then, so. Ripping it out and changing that by like a distributed system where hash tables are, you don't need trust on like 5% of the nodes. It's actually a huge piece of work. So yeah, it would be nice. Uh, we just need you know more resources, I guess. Thank you. There are some, on this topic, there are some researchers from EPFL that uh, are designing some sort of decentralized authority system and they're in discussion with the Tor developers. But it's a, it's a really complicated thing, like the bootstrapping of P2P systems in general is a pretty hard problem and this super node thing is uh, one of the de facto ways to, to, to get to it basically. Hey guys, thanks for all your work. Just quick question. Do you guys have any kind of an estimate of when this stuff will land and be publicly available? Rough, specific, anything? Mm -hmm. Is this stuff from Uh Okay, estimate. Um, so we, ha we, broke, the, we broke this thing in five steps. Uh, one. What, 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 what? Have I the whole talk not checked or so? I think I have the whole talk not checked. What? We have three and a half right now. So I would not expect this in maybe maybe like okay, let's be optimistic, like in a year. Around that. It's uh it's uh if you remember the slide yesterday from the other uh, the other uh um um talk, we had this uh, construction of onions which is nice, which is nice, and it's is the problem here, right? So one thing we didn't say is that this hidden service hidden service design right now will live in parallel with the new system. And just for those two to work together in terms of codes, and the C codes, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. So I'll say a year. Great, thank you. Uh, on this topic, again, we're literally two, three developers with uh, not even full time, some of us. So more funding, more developers would really accelerate this, uh, this task, basically. <laughs> yeah, C developer, please. Hey, thanks for all your work, guys. Um, my question was, when you had that diagram where you were running those compartmentalized app server, DB server, all that, um, and when you use a Tor relay between them, is there any way to kind of address that might not have enough bandwidth for you exactly? Or um, a Tor relay? And oh. Okay, um, so I've got no server, server and the DB server, and you, yeah, it's way back there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. 
so the, 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 the reason that I ask is because it's it's not your, it's not a good idea to run Tor uh, relays on any of the um, any of the that one onion right services that you run. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I meant between like the web server, app server, DB. When you're running like a Tor connection between the t all these servers, is there any way to kind of address that it might be slow and sluggish, and there's not really enough bandwidth if it's not on your own network? Um, it's not usually an, an issue. I run one of these stacks, and uh, basically what happens is that app server pushes. Uh, it's if you um, look at this uh, image, actually, there's only one way from app server to, to the web server. And um, App Server basically pushes to the Nginx uh, reverse proxy every, uh, I think, hour. So latency is not really um, a big thing. Okay. Like, um, yeah, like in this in this scenario, there is nothing like uh, there is no like literally real time changes that needs to be pushed. But um, I don't like I wouldn't expect like more maybe like five minutes max. You would have like with caching and everything. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Hi, thank you for the talk. I had one question about risk. The HSD or de-anonymization uh, de attack, uh, you mentioned that you can collect information about onion address access. What Ooh, that's that sieht aber spannend aus hier. What's the risk? So if you pull up the attack, you can de-anonymize the client, basically. So you know which client goes to which onion address. So it's a de-anonymized attack on the client side. If you get the guard, the guard knows with, uh, as dark, uh, uh, I have dark connections, clients as dark connection to a guard. So if you get the guard, you can de-anonymize the client. So in this case, just keep in mind, getting the guard is not enough. You have to actually take down the, the machine, go there, get the net flow of the ISP, and, and, and you know which one it is. Uh, so one, this is one of the reasons why we have uh, uh, rotation periods at the Vanguard, is that we expect that in five to 11 days on the second set, well, the takedown is, uh, it takes uh, longer than that in the, uh, uh, political system. So, so it's a hack, but uh, this is what I, we have. So, thanks. Well, let's first of all, give them a big hand. Okay, then what's this? But don't move. Um, uh, so if you, uh, if you are here, if you want to go to Cory Doctorow's keynote, which is in Lamar, Lamar um, is full. Um, you will not get in if you leave here to go see it. Auf dem gratis erreichbaren Microsoft-Server Lasergruppen uh, so mit der G149.2.2.1.7.1.3.4. Das war der Talk. Was der Slide brauchen wir nicht mehr. Das war der Talk Understanding Tor Onion Services and their Use Cases Hope 6 oder Hope XI ähm, 2016 von dem Channel The Tor Project. Uh, und ich bin hier gerade ein bisschen am struggeln. Ah, ist da Maus hängt? Alles klar. Ähm, genau. Den ersten Teil dazu mit ein paar Minuten äh, fehlend gab es gab's vor zwei Folgen. Ähm, genau, dann äh, joint doch bitte den Server 1.9.2.1.7.1.3.4 denn ich zahle immerhin hier für diesen Server und will euch eine lange Uptime garantieren und ähm, tja, genau, je mehr Leute davon profitieren, desto mehr äh, ja, Sinn macht das Ganze. Alles klar. Mhm. Wir sehen uns in der nächsten Folge. Ciao.